Not coming to play tonight? Okay, man. No problem. How's, uh, how's Ryan doing, just out of curiosity? Uh, I haven't heard anything lately other than he's still alive. And he's still talking about what went on physically, at least. Uh, he only had a, amazingly enough, only a dislocated shoulder. But they're trying to figure out what's going on inside his brain. He hasn't had a lot of memory, but he's first. So, kind of. Brother Burke texted me after uh, Sunday night service that uh, well, it's one of the ladies you work with, her boyfriend or ex-boyfriend? Ex-boyfriend. Ex-boyfriend was on a motorcycle, pretty much blacked out or whatever, smashed up, didn't think he was going to make it. Typically, right. But you say, well, how do you pray for that? Lord, would you please keep him alive? If he's not saved, and get him a nurse, an anesthesiologist, a doc, somebody that would have some soul consciousness. And I know you're scrambling around, man. I, I shouldn't say I don't, I don't know because I'm not a, I'm not in that, that field at all, man. So you're probably not thinking about leading the guy to Christ, but maybe somebody there would, or something that he had heard over his life would come back to memory. Thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus shall believe in thy heart. God, the raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. <laughs> you say that doesn't happen. Sure, it does. There'll be a lot of them, man. Might not have any rewards of the judgment seat of heaven, uh, judgment seat of Christ, but they're not burning in hell. Yeah, man. So, Lord, would you just keep them alive and get them, a, get them a gospel witness, please. And if he had one already, please bring it to his marriage. That, that's crazy. He doesn't remember. All. Wow. But you say it couldn't happen. It could happen anytime, man. Your life is a vapor. You have no idea. No idea, man. That's, Come upon it at any time, man. All right. What, what was Nimrod's occupation besides being in every high school class? Okay. Do you know what Nimrod's occupation was? So I had, I had Bert and I had James. I'm gonna, James is going to give you a shot, man. What was Nimrod's occupation? He was a hunter. Spot on. Genesis chapter number 10. Spot on. James... James, read Genesis. Ha, take it from the new to the old man. James, read, uh, if you could, 10, 6 through 10, please. Mm -hmm. The sons of Rama, Sheba, and Dedan, and Cush began begot Nimrod. He began he began to be a mighty one of oh, a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before. Yeah. The Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord, and the beginning of his kingdom was Babel and Erech. Mm -hmm. That's huge. First king of Babylon. That, that's, that's, the, that's the beginning of, I mean, that's where, that's where it happens, man. The center of God's universe is Jerusalem. But this thing, I started over Mesopotamia, Ur of the Chaldees, that whole area over there. And you got, you got the first king of Babel there in the land of Shinar. That's huge. You know what Saddam Hussein wanted to do besides being mentally not capable? What did he want to do over there? Go ahead and say it a little bit louder. He was trying to rebuild Babylon. He thought he was Nebuchadnezzar, man. He had a statue that was a replica of the 6x60. Six you can see pictures of tanks back in the night taking that thing down. And you're like, oh, it's just a statue. Those, ta those tanks are like up on an angle trying to pull that thing down. That statue is gigantor, man. It's like Shaq O'Neal on roids, man. It's monstrous. And you're like, who would make that? Nebuchadnezzar did it. And Saddam Hussein thought he was the... Uh, and I remember people saying, well, he's got 13 letters in his name, Saddam Hussein, so he's the Antichrist. I'm like, people are crazy, man. He wanted to build, a, he, wanted, he, he built like a theme park over there, didn't he? Is this still over there? He built like some sort of like theme. 
People wonder, how could there be a lake of fire during the uh, millennial kingdom? The, the lake of fire that's not the one in Revelation 20. It's the one that's in the lake of, the lake of fire that's on this earth in uh, Isaiah 34 with the cormorant and the bit turn and all that. You take them and bind them and cast them out of darkness and all that stuff and all those things that happen in the millennial kingdom, instantaneous judgment. Saddam Hussein, before they just finally crushed the whole thing that he was doing, what did he do near the end? You guys remember what he did near the end to just kind of tick everybody off? He started opening up those oil lines and lighting them on fire. And those things were burning for days and weeks because the amount of oil. What happens when the Lord's fire from the second coming lights that area on fire? But we're going to run out of oil and gas. No, not until the Lord has himself a little bit of a bonfire, man. That's a weird thing, man. There's a lake of fire in the... In the Millennial Kingdom, anyway. But that's your boy over there in the land of Shiner, and that whole area over there. Land of Shiner occurs seven times in the King James Bible. Pretty interesting. All right. What are the two... I mentioned this briefly on Sunday, and we were there. But what are the two Damascus rivers that Naaman wanted to be baptized in instead of Jordan? I mean... Haley, can you give me one? Nope. No, man. We actually, when you hear them, you're going to lose your mind. Mo, do you got one? Okay. The two rivers in Damascus says, remember when Elisha sends the message and says, hey, get out there and go and dip yourself in the Jordan River. He's like, are not, are not blank, blank, rivers of Damascus, but Kenny, give me one. Thames? That's what the Thames is over in England. You're a few centuries behind there, kid, but I mean, it's over there, man. Mike, you're going to give it a shot? It's not the Tigris, is it? No, ti no see, Tigris, you phrased that. Now we're going back in the garden. You guys are freaking me out. Justin, I need one of them, please. Ab, ab, nah, ab, nah. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. I know what you're saying. I interpreted your tongues. Don't let, the, don't, let them laugh, don't let them laugh you to scorn in the congregation, Justin. So one of them is Abana. That's correct. But what's the other one? That's, that's correct. Do you guys know where it is? Do you remember where we were Sunday for the one about how uh, Naaman was disappointed that he didn't get more praise, one of the dead flies in his life, that he should have gotten more praise than, you know, because he was a general. And, well, I, I should be treated better. Second Kings 5. Very good, Justin. Can, Justin, can you read, please? Uh, 10, 11, and 12 of 2 Kings 5. Good job, Justin. You got you nailed. I knew you had the other one, but I want to give somebody a, a shot too. Go ahead. Elisha sent a message, messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his name. Yep. And strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Are not Abana and Far Far Far, far, far yep. Yeah. It's what you get when you shoot in golf, yes. Rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel. May I not wash in them and be clean? No. So he turned and went away in a rage. No, you can't do that. You know why? Because God told you to go to well, doesn't he know who I am? <laughs> he knows exactly who you are. He's just not as impressed with you as you are. <laughs> do you know who I am? <laughs> no, do you, do you know who I think I am? <laughs> God's like, no, go scrub yourself in the Jordan River, man. Yeah, but I want to do it. No, go to the Jordan River. But I, I've got better. No, I told you to go in the Jordan River. Well, I believe it's Jesus plus Mary. I told you it's just Jesus. Yeah, but isn't it Jesus plus baptism? No, I told you it's just Jesus Christ. See how it gets nailed down when you get to salvation? Well, isn't there a little leeway? Not according to God's word. It's a... It be, uh, uh, wide is the gate right, that leads to destruction. Uh, because broad is the way and narrow is the gate which leads to destruction, and may there be which go in there at. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. It's a narrow and straight way, but it's open unto anybody. But not, it's weird how more people don't find it. I mean, I'm sure there are, but we just don't, we don't hear a lot about them. So that's pretty cool. All right, last one. We got, we got to get scooting here, man. I need some verses on. Humility or being humble? Please. We'll just take a few of them, whoever has. Verses on 
humility, humble, things of that have that word or f- connotation, the, specifically the word though. I know there's a couple of real easy ones that you should probably have relatively quickly, I believe. A little prideful tonight, ain't you? Can't get no verses on humility. No, go. <laughs> Brother Burke, go ahead, please. James 4.10. Yeah, man. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Amen. That's one of the probably the most common ones, and there's one that goes, it's almost the exact same uh, <laughs> wording, man, if you will, of that one that Brother Burt just quoted or just read, excuse me. <laughs> it is weird, huh? We do. I like the verses on the third heaven too, but these are the ones that really hurt me bad. And that would be the chair recognizes Jen. Mm-hmm. Humble thyself. Humble thyself. Amen. Wow. Brother Paul and then Taylor. Go ahead, Brother Paul. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, not being smart, but you do have a table of contents in the back of your Bible. I didn't want to give you the secret sauce if you can't find one or memorize one. I'm not being a jerk. Seriously, look it up, man. Nothing wrong with having uh, the, the tabs on the outside of your Bible, man. After a certain point, they'll go away. I'm sure they will, but getting used to it, yeah, man. You don't, you're not going to remember where they're all at. Taylor, go ahead. Proverbs 15.33. <laughs> That's the Lord. Instructional wisdom. And before honor is humility. Yep, I loathe you. That's the one I wanted. <laughs> Haley gave it to you? No, no, I had, I had just gotten to it. Oh, just gotten to it. Yep. All right. Mm. Mo? Uh, second Chronicles. <laughs> oh, no, 714. 34. Ugh, I knew you were going to get the nation of uh, America in there, uh, 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 50 states in there. I knew you were going to get me in there. Go ahead, 30. Uh, 34, 27. Mm. I think uh, I think you'd be good where you're at there, Mo. All right. <laughs> Actually, 26 to 27 would be good. And as for the king of Judah who sent you to inquire of the Lord, so shall you say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel concerning the words which, the words which thou hast heard, because thine heart was tender, and thou didst humble thyself before God, when thou heardest, thou heardest his word against mm-hmm. thee. Pretty cool. That's an eight-year-old kid. That's where it starts in verse 1. You know who that is? That's King Josiah. He's eight years old, man. <laughs> I have Deb Cogshaw, and then we'll go over to Kenny. James 4, 6. And he gave us more grace. Wherefore, we say, if I was rich, the proud would be the praise to the humble. Amen. Amen. Little little tag team effort there. Sweet. I like it. <laughs> Kenny? Proverbs 16, 18 and 19. Pride goeth before For destruction, and a haughty spirit, spirit before a fall. fall. Better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoils of the proud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's why this book is so contrary and hated. Wouldn't you rather enjoy the spoil with the proud? Now God says, go, go have a piece of brown bread and some smoky pea soup over there with the poor people. It's better for you to do that than sp- divide the spoil with the proud. I don't think, man, that's just crazy, man. I got Haley then. You good? Yes? Yeah, I got one. Okay. Just, just checking, man. Checking. Philippians 2, 5 through 8. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Yep. Wow. The one that the one that does not have to humble himself does. Hmm. Go ahead, Justin. Deuteronomy eight, two and three. Yep. And thou shalt remember all the way which mm-hmm. the Lord thy God let thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee. Yep. To know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger. Yeah. And fed Amen. thee with manna, which thou knowest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread alone. Yeah. But Amen. by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Amen. Isaiah 57, and then we'll get into it tonight for a little bit. Isaiah 57. <laughs> Not that I really care, but it's 733 already. Would you think that? That's an hour like that. What am I going to do for eternity? I keep saying it because sometimes you think, I'll be bored up there, won't I? Won't I just be floating on a cloud playing a harp with the other little babies from the Charmin commercial? <laughs> I just, just the fact that being around your Savior, how much is that? And time just won't, you won't there won't even be a, a clock up there, man. It's... It, with a, with, finally, the mind of Christ that you have down here in this book, with no corruption, no mortality, and you just get to think about them in a pure way all day long, and you'll never be bored. If you can't write all the things he did in 33 and one half years in all the books of the earth, what are you going to do when you see him up in a perfect place with no sin? When all the things he did on the earth, you couldn't write them all down. The books couldn't contain everything he did. I think I'd be bored up there. I'd rather party in hell. Okay. 5715. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabit eternity, only time eternity shows up in the King James Bible, who's, and of course that's a, where a person dwells. His name is the high and lofty one. And his name is holy, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to ride the spirit of the humble, to revive the heart of the contrite ones. That's pretty cool. How can you have pride in his presence? That'd be like me talking about my 100 days playing professional baseball next to Nolan Ryan. Well, I I play professional baseball, and he's like, (laughs) (laughs) really? (laughs) That's what it'd be like in a very small way when you get around the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, we left off with the gathering last week. Let's do a few of these and we'll, we'll, we'll shut her down. Go to 1 Corinthians. Give you a couple more names for the, for the rapture, this mystery we're studying, the calling out of the body of Christ before the tribulation period. I do believe it is seven years long. I would not have a problem with it if the Lord <clears throat> had shut things down in Acts 7 where he stands. I see the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. I would have no problem. The three and a half years would would work there. Somehow God would make Daniel 9 and all that stuff work. Judas Iscariot would be the Antichrist, the covenant, and all those things. I I don't have that all figured out, but I do believe, without a question, the church age is an anomaly, though God in his foreknowledge understood it and saw it. Again, when you go to the book of Romans and Galatians and Corinthians, and he's quoting Hosea, and Isaiah, and Jeremiah, and Deuteronomy, and telling you, oh yeah, that's, uh, that's God living inside you. I was just reading through 2 Corinthians this morning, 2 Corinthians uh, 6. You used to be sons and daughters of the Most High. You know where that's taken from? From Hosea 1. But he makes an application to you today in the body of Christ. What I'm saying to you is that I do believe it's seven years. I believe it's a full week. I believe in the middle of that week, you know, he's probably going to get killed, and then he, that's... He gets taken out of the way. Mystery of iniquity, when we get to it, he gets taken out of the way, and boom, there's the devil incarnate in that body. But he's not that way for the first three and a half years. And then he gets a deadly wound, and guess what? 
Satan enters him like he did in John 13. And the mystery of iniquity that he that now left will let, he's taken out of the way. That's not the Holy Spirit. That's not the church. And then, boom, there he is, the son of perdition. There he is, full-blown. We won't get into he who letteth will let right now, but that's something for you to think about. Because that boy's got to die. He gets a deadly wound. The miracles, are he gets healed from his deadly wound. And once he does that, it's, well, wasn't there somebody a few thousand years ago that did that? Well, I'm him. Because he says in the temple, showing himself that he is God. Wild stuff. But I'm not going to be here for that, and neither are you if you're saved. The body of Christ is gone. That's why it's called a mystery. That's why people, 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, I'm not, I'm not blurbulating up here to delay, but I want you to think about this. All these mysteries that we're looking at, not all of them, but 90% of them are in the Pauline epistles. Don't you think just from a, a doctrinal standpoint, from a little bit of maybe knowing rightly dividing the word of truth, maybe, okay, you don't have it all nailed down. I don't either. But just as a basic thing, when you think through it, isn't it odd that these mysteries come from the Apostle Paul? That the bulk of them, in fact, the vast majority of them come from the Apostle Paul? Isn't that weird? It's weird to me. Uh, that's why when you have churches now that are arguing about, okay, the Bible version thing, yeah, once in a while that might come up. But music is on the, primarily music starts first. That's where the argument starts, the music and the quote-unquote praise and worship team and all that foolishness and rubbish and garbage out of the pit of hell. Well, whatever, there's a few other words in there, but we've got to you know, tone it down a little bit. Um, but they argue about some things. What are the, some doctrinal things they argue with outside the Bible versions? Num one would be tongues. What's another one they argue about? Calvinism, you know, predestination, fatalism, you know, God choosing. Yep, what, tongues, yep, the sign gifts. Uh, what, are we going through the tribulation period or not? When's the rapture? Are you post-trib, mid-trib? Are you post-toasties? Are you Cheerios? What are you? <laughs> I'm post, I'm pre. What are you? I'm middling tribulational pre-time, I don't know what. <laughs> but you know what else they argue about? Eternal security. Who presents eternal security stronger than the Apostle Paul? I mean, I like John 10, but the reality is uh, Ephesians 5 is uh, a lot better. <laughs> I'm of his body, of his flesh and bone. I, I, it, okay, the Father has me in his hand, and the Son has me in his hand, and the Holy Ghost seals me, and all. That's wonderful, but it's better because I'm the body of Christ, saved by grace through faith, sealed of the day of redemption. It's a better position because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. In John 10, you don't have that yet. So you argue about eternal security. You, turn about, uh, you argue about tongues and healing, sign gifts. Bible versions come up. This singing, yeah, okay. But, but, it, but they, they love to argue about, oh, well, are you going through the tribulation period or not? Or what? I, I just never under... The two things that you should not be concerned about is eternal security and whether or not you're going to be here when the Antichrist is around. Well, you know, just a, the first part of it's okay. We get out of here before it gets really bad. <laughs> it's, just, it's amazing, man. It, it's amazing to me how many verses you... Now, if you've ever got into it with a brother in Christ about this, you will see the lengths they go to to twist and rest the Scriptures... The Bible says to their own destruction because somebody got in their ear because they had an itching ear and they were looking for it. And it says you'll heap yourselves teachers. I have no problem with Bible teaching, none at all. We teach a lot of Bible around here. But preaching will get that stuff out of your system. When somebody gets up and says, thus saith the Lord, and you're stupid for believing otherwise. You know, it has a little better sound to it than, oh, turn your Bible and we'll go through it. No, we can do that. But when somebody says, you know, emphatically, this is what the Word of God says, if you believe it, there's something wrong with you, or you maybe don't know, we need to spend some time with it, but after you know it and you still want to, you know, go on YouTube and find some special little preacher who itches your ears with his foolishness, yeah, you don't want a preacher. Because a preacher will, con will, through the power of the Spirit of God in the book, he'll correct you. Because God will use him to correct you. And I love Bible teaching, man. It's phenomenal, man. It's phenomenal. You need Bible teaching. 100% you do. But that preaching is what sets that heart to make that teaching applicable and search out that teaching 
and firmly get that teaching down for you. I'm glad these guys get up and teach Sunday school, man. But you know what you should do? You ought to went back and read Exodus a few times after what Jonathan did. And submission, subjection, quiet, meekness, and eternal life insurance. That's, that's why they do it. It's not for them to get in full space. I can do that pretty well, man. I can talk till you're don- like talk a- ears off a donkey. You know, what'd you pre- teach on, brother, brother Paul? No, I do remember. I'm just, I'm just making, I'm just making you tear. I'm just making you, t- I'm making you. It's labor. I'm just making you, t- I'm making you tear up right now. Oh, even so, come quickly. First Corinthians one. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm gonna die a horrible death. You'll all be there to see it. <laughs> Let's do this, uh, brother Bert. Can you get First Corinthians one, one through eight, and we'll we'll move on down the road. We got we got a scoop. We got a few of these to read. Paul, Paul, the apostle of Jesus Christ, to the will of God, and Sosthenes, our brother, unto the church of God which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Grace be unto you and peace from Amen. our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always on your behalf. For the grace of God which is given Amen. by Jesus Christ, that in everything ye are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall confirm, excuse me, who shall also confirm you unto the end, that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you just got a bow go right there. What did he call it in verse seven? What did he call it in verse number eight? The day. So, did you just, you got some Pauline definition, and this is going to help you down the road because the day can be the rapture, but it can also include the judgment seat of Christ. But the day of the Lord, primarily in the Old Testament, and even the references down the line in Peter and all that, is the second coming where he physically sets foot on the earth. You say, why would God make it so confusing? He's not. He's trying to put you through the ringer to see if you'll study that book, ask him for some answers. Would you open my eyes? I may be wondrous things out of that lot. Would you please just show me in my heart what the, the truth of the matter is? I like reading commentaries. I like I've, Clarence Larkin's Dispensational Truth things. Just, I mean, I've read commentaries from John R. Rice and all over the place. But you know what? There's no commentary on the Bible like the Bible. But you've got to rightly divide it because the day of the Lord in one place might be the invasion of Shennacherib. It, you know, you see, yeah, it's seen on the wheels are turning a little bit, aren't they? The day of the Lord is, is the second coming, but sometimes the Lord says that day, like when Shennacherib came in, or the day when that virgin gets ready, that's my day. It's, you, what I'm saying to you is be careful and cautious and compare spiritual things with spiritual. Get the verses out and run them. But you know you're in safe territory primarily in the Pauline epistles. Because who do you address in the first couple verses? Brother Bert read it. The church where? The church. And the called and the brethren. So is there a church in Corinth? Yes. An assembly, right? A congregation. But what is the church that he really narrows it down to when he opens up in those first four or five verses? The, The saved people there. The brethren, the church that's there, you members of the body of Christ, 1 Corinthians 12, 29, you members in particular, you ones who've been baptized, saved by grace through faith, and the Spirit of God puts you in the body of Christ, I'm addressing you folks, because what does the rapture mean to a lost person? They're not looking for the day of Christ, but saved people should be. He's talking about this 2,000 years ago. Yeah, and it's the promise that it was coming. Thank you, you just fulfilled 2 Peter chapter number 3. Thank you very much. You, you, you're, you're proving God's book without even knowing you're proving God's wo- book because that's what they, they've been saying. Well, you, you Christians have been saying he's been coming for a long time. Where is he coming? Oh, I haven't seen him. And they, okay. I know it's millennial, but in such an analogy, think not. The Son of Man cometh. And I know that's millennial kingdom. I understand that. But you, 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 the rapture, I don't know if you get a warning or not. It doesn't seem like it. I mean, in a moment of twinkling of eye, Trump... Two blasts, come up hither, your name, you're gone. (laughs) I hear guys talking about, well, maybe we'll get a warning. I don't know if you will or not. There's some 
figures in typology, but I mean, you know, well, if I just knew when he was coming, I'd straighten up. You would. Oh, I'd be a good witness then. Mm. Nah, I've been, I've been around too long. I know me too well. Mm, you probably won't go out and hand out tracks if he said, I'll, I'm coming back in the clouds 12 hours from now. Imagine if you got that warning. What would you do? Point is, it doesn't appear you get that warning. So why not live for the Lord while you can, knowing that he could come any moment or I could die? Like Ryan that blacked out on a motorcycle. Thank God he's still alive. Go on with me. Sorry, there's a lot of blurby light in there. Philippians 1. It's good for you. Deb, can you get Philippians 1, please? Verses one, uh, Philippians 1. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to pare this down, but you've got to start in verse number 1. It's one of those crazy ones like Colossians with uh, colon, semicolons, comma, 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 comma. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, 1 through 11, Deb. Amen. There you go. Even as it is meet for me to think of you all, because I have you in my heart, in so much as both in my bond and your defense and confirmation of the gospel, you are all partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that you may approve things that are excellent. Mm hmm. Thank you. You got the day of Christ. Deb just read it. In verse 11, then what do you have in verse 6? I'm sorry, day of Christ is verse 10. And what do you got over in verse number 6? Day of Jesus Christ. Keep on going with me over to uh, chapter number 2. Jen, can you get 2 verses 12 through 16, please? So if you can't tell, the, the name from Scripture for the rapture is the day of Christ or the day of the Lord Jesus Christ or the coming of the Lord in the context of the church age epistles. Go ahead. Please, Jen. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and disputing, that you may be blameless and harmless, sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse mm -hmm. world. He's saying, guys, I hope you have run a good race because when the Lord comes, the day of Christ, I want to make sure you guys are on par and that my investment in you was not in vain because he's coming for us. Day of Christ, not the day of the Lord's second coming. That's a big deal, man. Okay, well, maybe it's not a big deal. Maybe you want to stay here and go and get stung by a uh, uh, locust with scorpion tails. Have a good time with that. 2 Timothy chapter number 1. 2 Timothy chapter number 1. Jonathan, 2 Timothy 1, 13 through 18. It's a little work in your Bible. I know the flesh don't like it. Mine doesn't either, man. 17, yes, sir. In a nice, cheery, upbeat voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe not, man. I'll throw you a tape measure. It'll make you happy. Go ahead. <laughs> you know what? You got to get that thing covered in gold <laughs> before the next time. You got to, man. You got, I mean, you, you know what? Get it, get a chain, get that baby dipped in gold, and get up here and go and break down the Sunday school. He does, man. He does. But you're a gangster rapper from Stafford. Don't you act like you're not, man. <laughs> okay, maybe not. All right, 13 through 18. Let's get back to the Bible before it gets off the rails. <laughs> 
Hold fast the world of sound which thou hast heard of me, in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost, which dwells in thee. This thou knowest, that all they which are in Asia be turned away from thee, for he are, are jealous and imagined. Mm -hmm. The Lord give mercy in the house of Onesiphorus, for he oft refreshed me, and was not ashamed of my chain. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently, and found me. The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of, of the Lord in that day. And in how and in how many things he ministered unto me in Ephesus, thou knowest the Okay, he's not going to need mercy if he's saved. He's going up. But what does, that, what does this day turn into or blend in with regarding the rapture? Judgment seat of Christ. Lord, would you grant him mercy based on the way he treated me down here? He's already in the body of Christ. He's already going up. He's already going to get raptured out. If the, the trump sounds, he's gone. But Lord, would you give him some mercy in that day, which shows you what I said earlier that from the Word of God, not from what I said, but from the Word of God, that the, the day of Christ, the day of Lord, it is the calling out of the body of Christ. It's the mystery. But it also encompasses what? Corruption and incorruption, mortality, immortality, which a lot of people don't when they go over that mystery. I'm not being smart like I found something cool because I didn't. If you're just careful reading of it, it's, that's involved with getting caught because we get changed. But it also includes you as a saved person are getting at the going to the judgment seat of Christ to give an account of yourself. That's all part of the mystery. You say, what's the big deal about that? If you have a Thompson Chain reference in uh, Thompson Chain reference Bible on the left hand column in Romans 14, it calls the judgment seat of Christ the general judgment of Revelation 20. The great white throne judgment and the judgment seat of Christ are not the same thing. Thompson is a millennial. No millennial reign of Christ. Man just bumps straight up to the last judgment. And man, as the sum of all things, just rambles on right through. Post-millennial means a thousand years. Then he comes back. We are pre-tribulational, pre-millennial, because the Bible is set up that way. Not because the Baptist church believes it. The Bible pattern, we'll look at it when we go on, before I break my $2 glass against the wood for the third time and I smash this thing, is that the Bible pattern, even with the layout of your King James books, is premillennial, pre-tribulational. Have a holy, jolly Christmas. Second Corinthians chapter number one. Let me give me two more Wow. Quick question. I hope it's good. At the bottom of verse 16, it says, was not ashamed of my chains. What does that mean? Take a guess. I'm not being smart with you. Take a guess. What was Paul, what was a lot of his time spent? Where? You know, you, you ministered to him yesterday when you got him, you got him his commissary, man. <laughs> Kenny, you probably ministered to the Apostle Paul several times. Put some cotton up his nose, you know, the whole time, man. The Apostle Paul's like, it's a horrible thing to have this memory. It's terrible. It's going to get wiped out. I'm just going to walk around the third heaven like this. <laughs> But his, he's not afraid of my chain. He's locked up. Yeah. He's in prison. He's yeah. Locked up for the right reason. Oh, 100%. Yeah. 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 He's, not, he's, not locked, he's not locked up for. He, he ain't getting the perp walk because he did something wrong, man. <laughs> yeah. He's getting the Jesus walk like he's trying of Agrippa. Would you get saved, King Agrippa? Ah, uh, you know, that almost persuades me of a Christian, but I see what that Christianity brings. I would to God that all men were like you, King Agrippa. Accept these bonds. King Agrippa made a decision. He said, you know what? I, I bet you it's a good thing going home to heaven and having eternal life. And I like this Jesus thing. And wow, I, I have heard about him. But is that what the Christian life brings? Locked up by yourself standing in front of me? I kind of like my kingship, man. I like, I like my wardrobe and I like my food choices and I like my freedom and I don't know, man. Well, almost. That Agrippa is one of the to me is just one of the saddest cases in the Bible. Pilate's up there too. I know Pilate's wicked and he sheds blood in Luke 13. I understand that. I do. But how close was he to salvation? He wanted to let him go, but he was a coward because the 
crowd pressed him into it. I know the devil's been, I, and God and the devil, I, I understand that, but Pilate bothers me. And his wife even said, you know what? I had a dream this afternoon. I was taking a little nappy poo out in the, out in the sun porch, chilling like a villain. And I, you know, I just was troubled. And you know what? You ought to let that man go. He's a just man. Pilate's getting warned by everybody. Those, those are some cases that freak me right out, man. Think about my dad. My dad heard it. I, my dad was at my brother's ordination sitting right next to me. My dad used to umpire baseball and softball games on the fields at First Bible Baptist in New York and sit there and listen to them do Bible studies in between the games. And I think he died without Christ. It's a horrible thing, man. But Frank Brown had a free will. Just don't use that free will to reject the Savior. First, uh, 2 Corinthians 1. James, can you get 2 Corinthians 1 quickly? I say quickly, but that's, uh, that's preacher speak. But if you could, for the sake of time, can you get, uh, sec- can you get, can you get 2 Corinthians 1, 12, 13, and 14, please? Mm-hmm. And I trust that ye shall acknowledge even to the end, as also you ye have acknowledged us in part, that we are your rejoicing, even as ye also are ours in the day of the Lord Jesus. Yeah, that's the rapture, man. Can't wait to go up together. Let's go, man. Let's go. Last one, 1 Corinthians 5. 1 Corinthians 5. Going to mix it up. Pauly, 1 Corinthians 5. In a nice, loud, manly voice. Okay. <laughs> That's good stuff right there. First Corinthians 5, man. If you could, 1 through 5. Do we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle... Did I say First Corinthians? Yes. No, I'm serious. I'm not being smart. Did I say first? Or... Yes. Oh, you did. I messed up. <laughs> I know you did. I'm just trying to be gracious, but I can't. <laughs> Oh, man. It'll be a long ride to Southington. 1 Corinthians 5, 1 through 5, please. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not mm-hmm. as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. And ye are puffed up and have not read the more that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. Primarily uh, as Absent in body, but present in the spirit, have judged already as I were present concerning him that hath so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we are gathered mm-hmm. together in my spirit, and with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Last one, seriously, last one. Mike, can you get uh, go back a page? First Corinthians three, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. First Corinthians three, eleven, twelve, and thirteen, please, Mike. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall be there you go. Because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. That's your Second Timothy reference to uh, Onesiphorus, or is it Epaphroditus? I'm sorry. Is it Epaphroditus? I always it was on it was Onesiphorus. I'm sorry. I always get I get a, I get Epaphras, Epaphroditus on. Oh, slap their mama, whoever named it. <laughs> Give her them uses and Af, you know rasses. Come on, man. Larry, Curly, and Mo. <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying. But you just saw the day right there. The day here is, is the day of the judgment seat of Christ, but you don't get to the judgment seat of Christ without the rapture from what you just saw in 1 
uh, 2 Corinthians 1 and all those other places, that's called the day of the Lord Jesus Christ, the day of Jesus Christ, or the day of Christ versus the day of the Lord, which is primarily the second coming. Kenny, pray for us. We are out. Please. Thank you, Lord, for tonight. Thank you for the time we had gathered around your word. Amen. Uh, reading in 1 Corinthians 5, at the end of the verse, and it says, the, uh, I'm sorry, for the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that we do have the power of you, Lord, uh, through our daily lives as we Amen. do walk and talk with you and read your Bible and Pray those conversations will be uh, glory filled and full of you, and when they uh, that you open that door for us to honor and glorify you, and also to give out your gospel to yeah, amen. whosoever will. And uh, just thank you for the labors that we do do around here, go out street preaching, and go to the uh, old folks' home, and yeah, amen. even uh, with our co workers, friends, family. Yeah, amen. I just pray that open those doors and um, you know, people that are sick or hurt. Or Close to death, that they do, you do open that door for us or for some other, uh, Christian to proclaim your gospel. I just thank you for tonight and thank you that we do have that blessed hope of seeing you in the clouds. And we will look for those clouds on that beautiful sunny day with those rays coming down. We just thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.